So nowadays, a lot of people are experimenting with larger off-grid solar power systems, and they're using higher voltage battery banks and larger inverters. And something that a lot of people do not know and understand is how to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter. And if you do not know how to do this, you can actually damage the BMS protection system in these batteries. Another thing that can happen is that you'll create a spark when connecting the inverter to your battery bank, and that spark can actually cause an arc and it can spit hot metal at your eye. And so this is like a safety update and it can save you a lot of money. So everyone needs to know how to do this. So for this example, we have a 24 volt battery bank or two Battleborns in series. And then we have a 3000 watt with 6000 watt surge, 24 volt inverter. This thing is massive. Because we're messing with batteries and large inverters, you want to wear safety glasses. And these look pretty dorky, but you do not want to have anything hit into your eye. It just takes one bad event for you to lose your vision, so you need to wear these. So if I were just to connect this inverter directly to this battery bank, I will have a huge spark and it can damage one of these batteries. And so to prevent this problem from happening, all you have to do is buy a $1 resistor. This is a 25 watt, 30 ohm resistor and so all you have to do is connect it to the inverter lead like this and it should look like this you just want it to be touching this metal now on the other end we're going to connect this to our battery bank negative and all you need to do is touch it on the battery terminal for a few seconds the capacitors will charge in a couple milliseconds but this will charge them up so it does not damage after you have charged them up, you want to put this wire directly on the battery and you will see we had no spark when we connected it. And now the terminal is tightened down and this battery and inverter setup is good to go. And now that the inverter is connected, we can turn it on and we can add a load. So everything works perfectly. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to do. But a question I get a lot is what size inverter is required to use a resistor? So no matter what, with these types of drop-in lithium iron phosphate batteries, any inverter over like 1700 or 2000 watts, you want to pre-charge the capacitors. Everything that's smaller than that, you'll be fine. But it's a good idea to use this because it will not stress the capacitors or the BMS. But when it comes to higher voltage inverters, whether it's 24 or 48 volts or higher, you absolutely need to pre-charge the capacitors. The arc or the spark generated by connecting them has actually destroyed some of these terminals because I just put them straight on there and I was just testing equipment. And here's an example of where an arc just totally destroyed the terminal. See how all of that metal shot out and it was vaporized? And this could come out and hit you in the eye. So you want to avoid this at all costs. This was a 48 volt system with a five kilowatt inverter. So yeah, you got to be careful. But I must also add that if you have a small 500 watt inverter and you're connecting it to a car battery and it's 12 volts, you don't need to pre-charge any capacitors. You'll be totally fine. But if you actually have an off-grid system and you want the inverter and the batteries to last a long time, or you're using lithium iron phosphate batteries, you should always use a resistor. Also, lithium iron phosphate batteries, the internal resistance is so low, and with a higher voltage inverter in that inrush, you can destroy all sorts of stuff. I mean, that's why we have this crater on this terminal. It's because these batteries push so much power so quickly. So you absolutely need to use a resistor. I'll have a link below, but you don't need to buy these online. If you go to Fry's Electronics, or, I mean, we had Radio Shack not long ago. Any electronics store will have these for one, maybe three dollars max. So, very easy to find, but everyone needs to have them. Now, the next part of this process is discharging these capacitors safely. So, this is a different one, and a lot of people don't talk about it. But if you have a higher voltage inverter, you want to discharge these capacitors with a resistor. So, let's learn how to do that. So, first, disconnect the negative wire. And understand that this negative wire connected to the inverter has charge, it has energy potential. And some people could just short it out on the positive of the inverter, but you don't want to do that with a higher voltage inverter. So what we do is we take our resistor, and this is a 30 ohm. You can use like a 50 ohm, but 30 ohm works pretty well. And all you want to do is touch it on the positive. And now these capacitors have been discharged. Now if I put it on here, look, there's no spark everything is good to go. And these capacitors will discharge on their own over a couple of weeks or months, depending on which ones you have. 
but you want to do this safety wise on any inverter especially on higher voltage inverters anyways so yeah i hope you guys like this video and i'll talk to you soon bye